Welcome back to an FNA, and it is absolutely a four new animators today, because today I want to talk about testing your body mechanic skills. So what does that mean? So basically, when I teach, I look at my students' reels, and I look at where they are skill set wise and then I can kind of guide them like where they should be going. Sometimes you have students that are not quite there, but then the assignment calls for like a 20 second, two character lip sync piece, and that's just quite the leap. So I have to kind of look at, maybe you should go back to body mechanics and practice that more before going into lip sync. And sometimes it goes further where you have to go back to bouncing balls, but you got to really master the principles. But one of the things that I do when the body mechanics don't quite work is to have them do a sit down. But it's not a like a big hero six style character sit down that has personality. That's really all super cool. It is extremely exaggerated where you just sit. It's super vanilla, not even arms. I'll take the arms out. It's just the root, the upper body and the head. And it's all about a very exaggerated sit down where the root has to stop. And then you do this kind of Ugh movement like this. It's purely to get into the habit of breaking up the roots, the chest and the head for some drag or overlap and then understanding how when one thing stops, the weight of the rest of the body still has to continue to go down. There's a weight transfer. There's that momentum that can't just suddenly stop, but it's a transfer of that momentum. Root stops, chest goes down and so on. So basically what I do is I do a demo and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to show you and I put in that demo that I did for the class. It kind of walks you through a very <laughs> exaggerated sit down. Again, this is not for naturalism. This is not to do like an acting piece. This is purely exaggerated. You got to show the root with a nice arc, a little bit of a pause and then a plop. So this is about weight. If you just do the root only, it's about showing how you can be balanced and then off balance. And because of that, you will eventually fall and plop onto the cube, the chair, whatever you have. And then you add the chest to it. So then you're going to have some drag overlap and an impact. So the root stops, chest goes down, and then you attach the head to it. So then you're going to start to have something like a pendulum style thing where you want to go beyond bouncing ball pendulum, but you want to apply that to a human. Again, I'm taking an arms. It's kind of like a, a really simplified mechanics rig in a way. I'm using the bony rig. I'll put that in the link in the description because it's a nice simplified FK style spine setup, which is easier than if you go into IK's, you know, spliny controllers where it gets very translated, where you don't really have that nice FK style overlap and just the easier chain style animation. Now, what's the test aspect of it? Well, this is there to see that you understand those principles and then you can do all of this, let's say within a day. This really shouldn't take you longer than a day. By a day, I mean like eight hours. Like an eight, nine hour work day, I guess. And if you don't have that time, then you would split it up into two, maybe a weekend, right? But it really shouldn't take longer than that. And I say it shouldn't if you want to go into advanced character animation, lip sync, performance, and acting, where you don't really want to be bogged down by the mechanics aspect of it. You just want to concentrate on performance and acting. So if you can't do this over the weekend, that's fine too. That means that you're just at a different level and you got to practice this. It might take you a couple of weeks. It might take you a month or two. That's totally fine. But then you need to recognize where you're at on the staircase of of skill sets and don't skip some of those steps and go straight to lip sync and you know facial performance and stuff like that. But enough of the theory, I wanna put in now the demo and I hope it all makes sense. This was for the class, but let me know in the comments if anything was not clear, I can always elaborate, but let's get into this. All right, so here for the sit down, I'm gonna use the ultimate bony rig. The cool thing about this one that you can hide, hide and hide more stuff. So what I'm going to do, I wanna keep this on here, but I do wanna hide it and show you that what you don't want to do, let's make this shot a bit longer. You don't want to do where the root just goes and sits. And let's say we're sitting around, I don't know, like somewhere here, where things just kind of move down in a linear way. A, you want to take your curve, let's go back here, and you want to flatten this so that it starts slow and goes down but you're still going to move in an arc. So as it goes back, it's going to be more like this, where we go further back a bit, and then it will go down. And then you can go down maybe to here, pause a little bit, and then go down. I'm gonna spline this back and down. So you can see how fast this is and how much more time we need. Let's extend the shot. You're going back and even here, you're going to have to have your character lean forward. That comes later, but you're going to have this and maybe you're going to be a bit more like that and then sit down and then this will be a bit faster and maybe even just a bit more forward. So going back here, maybe a bit higher there. And then we go back and we go maybe a bit more in an arc. And then here, and it will probably hold this over three frames. So one, two, three, a 
bit more like this here. So I want this frame to be here. Somewhere like this. And what you want to do is in your translate, you want to give this a bit of a pause. And you can spline this, make sure it's not broken. And then again, it sits down. And the other one I'm not super concerned about. It's mostly the TY, like that. It's a bit sharp, so you can give this one more frame, sit, like that. And then at the end, I'll give this one more frame down just to cushion it a little bit. So we have a bit of a soft. It doesn't feel like it's rock on rock, just a little bit. It's not too bad, but you can always do the visualize, create motion trail. Then you can see here, it's still fairly flat. I would still go up a bit more, a bit more like that. So here, it's not too bad. Spline this, whoop, like that. And I wanna hold this a bit longer. So I wanna extend that moment of that sit down. So you can always set key here, set a key here. I'm gonna delete that one in the middle. Grab all of this out. And then make sure that we have still a nice, nice flowy arc here. So we're going to slowly sit down. And then here we're gonna to start to slow down a bit. Then we're gonna hold this a bit longer. And then we're gonna sit down. And that should be okay. I do wanna spline all this here. It's gonna sit, boom, like that. Go back and they have to lean forward a lot in order to be balanced. And I will probably hold this here. So where my curve and Y is here and here, I'm going to hold that as well. I don't want him to continue to move backwards too much. And even at the end, not too much. So what we have now is kind of a huh, more like that. And I take the, take everything off here. Polys, there you go. So it slowly starts to go back and down. Kind of like that. At least this works roughly here. Now I'm gonna bring back the body. And again, I don't care about those arms. So now what I'm gonna do is, you can do this with the root as well. Let's see if I can, show it by moving everything. I'm just curious how this rig works. It's not too bad. Let's try it. Technically, I would do everything with the spine. Let's just do it like this. I'm gonna take the spine and the head, like both neck controllers here. So as we go down, when we sit, that's your impact. It will be somewhere around here, but I want that neck to be a bit higher like this. Character still has to kind of look forward. Okay, so we're going from this to this. And then on that impact, we're going down. It needs to go oh, down. And then we go back. I don't know yet about the timing. I'm exaggerating. Obviously, with the pose, I'm just dragging everything back, forward a bit, and then straighten. Just straighten all of these just in case. Now, in terms of the pose, when it goes all the way back, I would reduce this. So it's maybe everything will go back this far. And then we're going to go forward this far. And then we're going to do this. Okay. Now, when you sit down, impact back and like this. So you're going to take all of this. And I'm going to spline the rest almost. I'm going to flatten that last one. I want to ease in. Right, so that your curves look like this. The linear here, because that impact, bam, on that root is gonna just continue with that chest going forward. But again, this is everything is pose to pose. That's what a lot of you have, where it's down, up, forward, and then that's it. It goes forward a lot. I will reduce this for sure. 
and you can maybe go even a bit further but this is just for simplicity's sake now what you can do i want specifically the head and neck to drag and be delayed so when this goes down just like with the pendulum this will continue and take this and delay this by one two three four let's see so when you go down barely you can barely see this even if i would delay this more it would be too much what you're gonna have to do is delay this and then really push the pose so we're going down and as this goes back we're gonna push that neck down as it goes back here you're gonna push this further back and that's not too bad here so now it's already somewhat there what you have to understand though is that when the root hits this and the body goes down the head has to drag that's the main idea drag spline this so you have that delay here and then this somewhat works but the poses are dramatically over exaggerated so i don't want to go this low you can still have a delay and right when you can see here when the chest stops going forward which is around here you want the head to continue a bit more that's when you have to go in there by hand and move that head forward probably can delete these now spline these so that you have drag and as the chest see that as the chest stops and goes back the head continues to go forward and back Whoop. and as we go up we can delay this I right, can manually go in there and drag that head same thing here we're still dragging and then as the chest stops the head goes back again this is exaggerated so you're going to start reducing this a bit this will still drag maybe a bit much and then as we come to a stop on that chest that's when the head will continue to go down it's not that bad let's spline this and sit there you go it's really super exaggerated and really not realistic whatsoever but that's okay and you can still take that beginning as we go back we want to be a bit more balanced right that root is already pretty far back so we're going to start bending forward a lot more even here you're going to have to make sure that there's a balance and then we can come back a bit we can spline this you want to make sure that the head is not unnaturally looking down it would still be somewhat like this still trying to look up and then we have this so i'm going to spline this as well and then we have that and then you can push just the top joint a bit more so that on something like this could just be just that and then we're like this this is fairly imbalanced so i'm going to take this translate and what if i go actually fairly forward and at the end that's the sit let your feet go more like that forward lean forward bam and that's it so you can see that we're leaning forward a bit. We're still fairly balanced. This, we are pushing it with the off balance, but the head is still pretty far in front of the feet. And then we stop down, boom. And once that root stops, chest goes forward. As it goes forward, the head drags. As the chest stops and continues, and now starts to go back, the head goes forward and drags. And then we have like a springy, it's almost like that pendulum that we saw doing that. You can go further and you can take the, the yeah, what's it called? The pelvis and have it slightly rotated like that. So we can have a little bit of a change there. Boom. And as it goes forward, it will pull that a bit. And then I will probably stay here just to get something in there. You can spline this. I'm going to flatten it here. This is again very rough, but 
even this roughness to me is enough if you have it like this it would be great that's all that i'm trying to have you understand that the chest and the head are separate in how they go up and how they drag and you can again completely exaggerate this if you want so if you're going bang, to go down like this so that maybe the neck here the lower neck even has more of a drag and then going back and straightens and then we compensate with this not going as far just so it's still somewhat realistic like that you can see how far that lower neck goes that's okay too I wouldn't go crazy and have oh, like a massive, massive compression here. That's also what a few of you have, because then you can see how quickly this goes back and forth, right? Quick, quick, and then it just, it just doesn't, it's already so exaggerated, but it makes it even less real. Just give this enough of a bouncy move. You can do, this leaning forward using the root as well if you want just to give that um what's it called that hip rotation something in there where we at yeah something here and then obviously i mean you know the character won't be straight there so you have to go here but i i don't always do this because now i have to have rotation on the spine and the root to bring this out if that makes sense All right if i'm looking at the root here it goes forward but now i'm having root rotation in here not this one this one plus the spine i don't know now i'm getting to me it gets a bit complicated and i can see how the spine and the root here are fighting I personally would stay away from that and just look at what you can do with the pelvis. So if you're doing this, just add that roundness in the pelvis. I'm going to take this out, round it a bit more if you want. And then at the end, it does, you know, it does other things here. If you want to straighten it a bit more and then, then give this a bit more feel to it. You know, like that. Flatten this, spline that rest. I prefer to add squishiness and just movement in that lower section, but you gotta be careful that it doesn't become too squishy and, and moving around. I can already see parts of the legs here. See how this line on that thigh moves back, but then it keeps on moving a bit. I don't know, I, I'd be careful with stuff like this, but generally, this is your sit down. And again, you can take all of this. I'm going to grab even this. Hold on. I'm going to zero this out. Delete all animation. Just grab this. So let's say just the top of the head. Pose. Here is a pose. Then we go down. And then we go back. And then we go forward. And then back. And I'm going to show you here. On that impact, I want that to be linear because I want to feel that sun impact here. This can be splined out. The rest can be flat. I actually don't want any of this right now in the hips. So we are sitting down, boom. Boom, boom. That's the idea at the beginning. Then I want to make sure that we are still leaning forward, right? That would be to me the next step. You lean forward, boom. But then that means you're going to have to push that a bit more. Then you come back and do this. And then you just counter the head a bit. So you still want that head to be not too crazy in terms of how far we go, right? Now, I can take that head curve 
And again, delay this by one, two, three, four. And you're gonna have a little bit of drag overlap. It's really minimal. It really all comes down to you setting more keys and pushing the pose. So on that impact, you're gonna have to manually delay that head so that it's this. And then as it changes here, it's gonna drag more. If I spline this, boom, we have this. So we can go up maybe a bit lower here, a bit higher here. So the head has, boom, drag, drag, goes back. Again, it's not aligned with the spine, it's dragging, because it's delayed, spline this. And then here, as the spine goes back and returns, the head is going to drag. So I'm gonna set this a few frames later, delete this, spline this, and then it's okay. And sit like that. I know sometimes you can go, well, what if I take all of these and do like the pendulum one, two, three, and then just take this one, two, three, that doesn't quite work. Then you get a very, very wobbly spine. The head keys don't work. Then we're getting back into what some of you have where it gets very pose to pose, right? Where we're hitting this, you counter the head, but then you ease everything in and then the spine goes back and the head goes back. But what we need to do is the head needs to continue to go forward as the spine stops. This is why I would not do that full delay where you take the, uh, the curves and just, you know, offset, offset, offset. You have to really think in terms of posing. Again, that's the idea of your sit down. And what helps is just to also act it out. So this is not going to look realistic and feel realistic, but I'm going to do this and you can do this in a slow fashion to really think about how things move with a couple bounces really act it out and see how this feels even if you don't do the initial sit down you're already sitting but you're going forward here you can going forward with the chest while the head goes up then while the chest reverses and goes back the head continues to go down and that's where the overlap and then the drag comes in and so on this is so exaggerated, but you got to act it out like this so that you can feel what those actions are. And then all you have to do is something like this. All right, there you have it. I hope that was clear. Like I said before in the intro, what I'm going to do is one of the next clips is going to be a fundamentals of body mechanics. So basically what you need to pay attention to, not just on this, but in general, what are the typical pitfalls and what are, it's kind of like a checklist of what you need to know and pay attention to when you get into body mechanics, just because body mechanics issues show up all the time in every class for every student. I dealt with it a long time. It took me a while until it clicked. It's just something that's completely normal to go through and to learn and to process. So in order to make that easier, I'm going to make a list and some demos and hopefully that will be maybe next week maybe in two weeks but that's something that's going to come up fairly fairly soon again i hope that was helpful and if it was maybe you want to subscribe so you don't miss any of those it helps my channel grow you know like the, the youtube pitch which i skipped at the beginning but here i am and also if you want me to help you with your shots you know i have workshops you can set up at any time so i can go through stuff like this you can talk about this i can do demos for you you can show me your shots i can critique them it's the usual workshop detail stuff again link in the description with all the information and that's it from me if you're still watching as always thank you for your patience i appreciate that you're still here and hopefully i'll see you in the next upload.